Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's video update. Today is Friday, April 16th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, let's jump into the markets for just a minute. Then we will give you an update on our day trading and then we'll jump into the alerts and our current position. So take a look at SPX to start. Uh, I mean, this just thing is, is relentless. Just continues to grind and push into new all-time highs, almost 4,200 in the S&P. NASDAQ also pushed into new all-time highs this week. Uh, the Russell small cap index, not quite as strong, but still you know, just under all-time highs. I mean, we're talking about just a few points here. So uh, if we look at these on a year-to-date basis, the Russell is now up 16% year-to-date. S&P is up 13, and the NASDAQ is up over 10% year-to-date. Uh, taking a look at the VIX, I mean, the VIX just continues to get annihilated. Uh, let's go back to the yearly chart. Uh, and you can see we're now, you know, we're down here into pre-pandemic levels in volatility. But what's interesting is if you look at the VVIX, which is volatility on volatility, uh, it's actually starting to get bid up a little bit. So not sure if there's anything really to read into that at this point, but Interesting to note that the volatility on the VIX options is starting to pop uh, just slightly. Um, if you take a look at bonds, take a look at TLT, uh, it had been just on this massive downhill slide. It's actually starting to catch a little bit of a bounce, and which means, which means interest rates have started to stabilize. They were starting to push higher, push higher. Uh, even gold and silver starting to catch a bounce again. Uh, and you know, most, most assets just continuing to push higher. If we look at oil, oil, you know, just had a little bit of a slide a few weeks ago and starting to bounce back up as well. And so with that, uh, of course, Bitcoin, uh, this is, this is the Bitcoin futures, but, uh, they hit over 65,000. So cryptos can, uh, continue to just have some massive upside as well. All right, so let's jump in quick, real quick, give you a quick update on the day trading. Uh, this week booked a little over $1,200 in profits, so nothing massive. Uh, I've also started tracking the days of the week, so I can kind of get a get an idea if I trade better on certain days than others. Uh, obviously, there's been certain holidays on some Mondays and Fridays, so I haven't traded as much on those days, but Wednesdays and Thursdays seem to be my best trading days of the week. Uh, nice week in the Mighty 90s, over $2,300 on the Mighty 90s strategy. Uh, a few losses on the pairs trades, uh, a little bit red in the runners, but overall plus, uh, plus $1,200. That puts us at over $25,000 for the year to date and up over $60,000 um, since we've been tracking. So good stuff in the day trading, having fun in there. Uh, I also did a recap of the day trading in the Profits channel in Discord if you want to learn more uh, and hear more detail on that. All right, so let's jump into the alerts. Starting with the 12th, we closed out a long call diagonal that we did in BABA. And basically what happened is they, you know, BABA had been weak. There'd been a lot of antitrust, you know, commentary in the media. Uh, that came out. They basically got a fine. Uh, didn't look like anything else was going to happen. So BABA actually popped up. So we went ahead and closed that out. Um, and, and that was, I'm sorry, that that was actually a long put diagonal. So this is, this is incorrect. I should say long call, excuse me. That is a long put diagonal. That was, uh, it was fixed, but it didn't, it didn't reflect here. So as you can see, these are puts. So we were short and Baba popped up. And so we went ahead and just closed out. Instead of taking a full loss, we just closed out and took a partial loss on that one. Uh, ES rolling adjusting trade. So this was a long put vertical that we've been holding for that short delta. Rolled this from 18 out to 39 DTE. Uh, so if we take a look at ES. So price is just outside of the range here. So just looking for some more downside to get back into range on that position. Uh, Starbucks, a nice long call diagonal. And so we were, we took a bullish position in Starbucks, booked over 100% profit on the remaining piece. So we took off half at about a 60% profit, held the other half and closed it out at over 100% profit. You'll notice we've been doing a lot more of these diagonals, a lot more directional plays. 
And why is that? Well, I, I touched on it at the, in the beginning here, and it's because, I mean, volatility is just next to nothing, right? I mean, if you look at the IV percentile and IV rank, we're talking an IV percentile of one and IV rank of two. That's not the time to be putting on these, you know, premium selling um, spreads because implied volatility is so low. And if it pops, it's going to work against you. And so just keep in mind when, when, you're, when you're doing more directional plays, those are lower probability plays, right? So you're going to have more, more losses in those than you do on your high percentage, you know, strangles or iron ducks or, you know, those high, high probability trades. So keep that in mind. And so when you're doing these directional plays, and that's why you'll see us be uh, trade so small. I mean, we're taking three or $400 of risk uh, in the trade on these, on these diagonals. So taking smaller risk, but staying engaged, getting, you know, just finding some different directional opportunities, but just keep your position size small. Cause remember those are lower probability uh, trades. In this case, this one worked out. Uh, Lulu along call diagonal. So this is one that we had on, excuse me. This is, this was another one that got messed up. This was a, a, a long put diagonal and we were looking for some follow through to the downside in Lulu. Let me pull up a chart. So in Lulu, we put this on a little bit after earnings and what we're looking at here, let me zoom in. Uh, so we're in this kind of consolidation period after earnings kind of dropped. And when it bounced back up, we were looking for a potential continuation to roll over when it didn't do that, when it pushed up and broke above this consolidation area, uh, we just closed it out again. We don't, we didn't want to take a full loss on this trade. So we just took it off for a partial loss. And, and in fact, what we did uh, immediately is, is we reversed it. We put on a long call diagonal. So when it pulled back on this day, we entered right here. And, and, and so we're going long to see if we can get a continuation to the upside. So if you take a look at that now, uh, here's what it looks like. Not too, not too far off from where we put it on, uh, but a lot of good uh, upside potential if we, if we get that continuation to the upside. Remember, you know, on this, we're, we're only risking $492. And when we put these on, we're putting these on with the, with the mindset that, hey, if this thing tanks, if this thing goes against us, we're willing to take full loss. And that's why we're doing such small position size. But we also have a huge potential on the upside, you know, of 100% plus uh, on these if it, if it spikes up in our favor. Uh, so here is that opening of that long call diagonal. Uh, JP Morgan, we did a pre-earnings long strangle. Uh, this was, we, we ended up closing that out before earnings and it never gave us the move or the volatility pop leading into earnings. But look at, look at this. I mean, this is really, really abnormal. Um, if you look at, first of all, JP Morgan, really going back all the way to the end of February, this thing just traded in a super, super narrow range. And here's the earnings right here. So we took it off right before earnings. But back here, when it was still just consolidating, you know, things don't usually consolidate that long. You know, at some point, they usually break out up or break out down. And that's why we did that uh, pre-earnings long strangle. The other thing that we anticipate going into earnings is that you're going to get an increase in implied volatility leading up to the earnings announcement. Well, we never got that either. Implied volatility just stayed absolutely uh, you know, minimal. And so we never got the price move and we never got the uh, spike in implied volatility. So we ended up just cutting out of that one before earnings. Uh, SPX opening trade, adding a weekly double calendar. They did this one with nine and 12 DTE uh, with volatility so low. I mean, these things are just so cheap. So we're taking very little risk on these as well. But if we just get a little bit of a increase in implied volatility, we should see some good profits come into these uh, hopefully in the coming weeks here did have a conversation with a couple people in the community, you know, about, you know, why are you, why are you putting weekly double calendars on when the market's just continuing to, to, to go up? Well, one, we don't know that ahead of time, right? So we don't know that implied volatility is just going to stay this low forever. At some point it's going to pop up. And so, you know, yeah, we've, uh, you know, I mean, this is a pretty massive move in one week right here. So, of course, that's going to bust out of our range of, of uh, weekly double calendar that we did last week. But, I mean, this is a, just a pretty extensive, you know, several standard deviation move. And so you can't, you can't anticipate those. You can't play for those. Uh, you know, I would have anticipated more action like this, right? Two-sided action, which is perfect for those weekly double calendars. Uh, so we have taken a loss. But remember, 
these are probability plays. So we're not trying to, on these plays, we're not trying to anticipate direction. Uh, we are simply putting them on. You are going to have periods when you have a little drawdown, but we haven't really had much of any. Uh, so we're just going to continue to put these on week in, week out. And, you know, eventually we're going to get back to either some two-sided action or maybe a little downside. And, and, and those profits are going to roll right into those. So you can't anticipate that. Don't try to, don't try to guess when that's going to happen. Uh, at least we won't. You, it's your money. You do what you want. But we'll continue to be putting, putting these trades on and continuing to uh, manage them as normal. Uh, so we put that one on, and then we actually put on another one a couple days later today on Friday. I'll, I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, Zoom long call diagonal. Uh, added this as a bullish play. Did this one with 23 days out in the front week. And so let's take a look at Zoom. I'll show you what we're doing here. So Zoom, again, it's been kind of in this consolidation period, had this little breakout here. And so when it pulled back, that's where we got long, looking for a potential continuation higher. Uh, if we look at the Analyze tab, pretty close to where we put it on, down a little bit on this one. So looking for some upside to benefit that. And again, those, those bullish plays also help balance out our portfolio. We've been carrying very little uh, short delta in this big run, which has really helped. So our, you know, in this, in this massive run right here, our P&L is, is basically in our accounts pretty flat. Um, and we're, and we've been short, you know, so that's, that's the goal of that short Delta. Had we been, you know, getting really, really short, you know, Oh, big move up. Let's get, let's put on some more short Delta. You know, we've been, we would have been getting hurt even more, but we've managed this really, really well. Uh, and, and so just make sure that you're comfortable with the amount of short Delta. If this thing keeps extending, we will add some short Delta because eventually we're going to get some downside. Obviously we just don't know when. So we're just being a little cautious that we're still bullish short term in the market. And so, um, so we will start to put on some short Delta uh, probably next week just to start layering it in if this thing does continue to go. Uh, so that's the, that's the plan. Uh, but we'll also put in bullish plays because we want to, you know, take advantage of some of these. If, they dip, if the dips happen, take advantage of some of these rips. So that is the plan. Uh, SPX uh, did an iron duck. So when we did get a tiny little pullback in the market, we put an iron duck on with uh, 14 days to expiration. So if we take a look at SPX. And in fact, we'll just let's, let's take a look at all the positions in SPX while we're here. So this is one of our weekly double calendars, up about 70 bucks on this one since we put it on. The other one is this one. And you can see this is the one we put on earlier in the week. And so the price is up here kind of in the upper end of the range. Uh, we might, and we might layer into another one of those on Monday. We'll see what, what the market does. If the market continues higher, we'll layer into another one. Uh, and then here is the iron duck. And you can see, obviously, with prices moving higher, prices moved up the beak. Uh, we're still in a position where we've got a decent probability of getting back to the duck head. So we're going to leave this one on for now. Still got about a 20%, but if price stays here or creeps higher into next week, we may book this one early. So we'll see what happens there. I'd love to get some more ducks on, get some more theta on. Uh, and then here is a closing iron duck where we went ahead and booked beak profit on this one. SPY closing trade. So we had done a vertigo. Uh, this one just had one day to expiration, had a nice move higher on that day, gave us a chance to book a nice profit. I think we booked 300 and some dollars on that one. And then here's SPX. We closed out one of our weekly double calendars. Uh, this one expired the following day. So we needed to close. It was just outside of our range. Uh, so we ended up taking a small loss on that one. And then here's the other weekly double calendar that I just showed you that we opened. QQQ. So this is a one of our short call verticals that we've been rolling for that short delta. Rolled this out from May to June. Uh, still had a, a decent amount of time in May, but this one with the up move had, had really gotten way out of range. So we wanted to get back to a positive theta position here um, in this and, and, and continue to keep it on for our short delta. So we went ahead and rolled that out to May. Now, May has a little bit further out than our wheelhouse, 63 days. We kind of like to be in that 30 to 60, uh, but just wanted to get this out. We're going to be extending duration and keeping that for short delta anyway. So just went ahead and rolled that one out. And that was our last trade. So those are all of the alerts. 
Let's take a look at some of these other positions. I already mentioned ES. Let's take a look at ZB. So ZB, we've got this short strangle we've been managing. We're up about a little over $300 on this one since our last adjustment. Uh, Apple, this is one of our short delta plays. You can see, obviously, uh, price way at a range there, looking for some downside to get back in. Uh, we'll, we'll wait to roll this one and just kind of spread out our rolls. Uh, this is Baidu, so market's closed, so don't pay attention to that P&L line. That's a little off. Uh, but this is one of our short uh, plays in Baidu, so looking for a little bit more downside to take advantage of the weakness that we've been seeing in Baidu. Uh, so this is, you know, this nice flush down, little bounce, and so we're looking for a potential rollover in Baidu to benefit us there. DE, John Deere, uh, this is another short delta play. It's a little bit out of range, need a little bit of downside to get back in there. Same with DIA, that's a short call vertical. Same with IWM, that's a long put vertical. Uh, Lulu, I think, I meant, yeah, I mentioned that one. QQQs, I mentioned. Rut, rut, we've got a rut duck. Uh, so this one, if price continues much higher into next week, we'll just close this out early and beak, uh, book a beak profit. Uh, we've got about 16% probability of getting back to the duck head area. So if this moves much further, we'll just go ahead and close that early. Hopefully get some more downsides so we can add some more. SMH, we've got the short strangle that's been adjusted into a straddle. Price is hanging out right here in the upper end of the range. Could use a little bit of downside to get back into center there. I mentioned SPX, XLK, another long put vertical. Just looking for some downside to get back into range there. And I mentioned Zoom. So that's all the alerts. That's all the positions. That's your update. If you guys have any questions, let me know. For you day traders, we will be streaming live every day next week uh, and the next few weeks. I don't see, I don't have any um, issues, no holidays coming up. So we will be live streaming. Also, we've got a uh, kind of a new adjustment to one of our volume strategies that we're going to be tracking and watching and, and, uh, and, and vetting and kind of making some, some tweaks to as well. So if you didn't see the chat uh, earlier today, we'll be, uh, we'll be, we'll be doing some more discussion about that in the live stream room as well. So Look forward to that. Look forward to next week. Everybody have a good weekend, and we will talk to you then.